The screen fades from black to the chilling echo of a distant gunshot, the howling wind a sinister prelude. We follow Julia, her breaths short and rapid, as she plunges into her weathered vehicle, escaping into a landscape ravaged by desolation. The world around her whispers tales of an apocalypse, with acres of barren desert and skeletal buildings marking the path of destruction. As Julia's rusty car halts beside a graveyard of vehicles, the air hangs heavy with foreboding. She steps out, her eyes scanning the desolate horizon. A skeleton, ensnared in its final, gruesome repose, lies within an abandoned car, a grim reminder of the world's fate. She rummages through the remnants of civilization, her hope dwindling with each empty fuel tank and barren cupboard she finds. With resilience etched into her every step, Julia continues her odyssey through the unforgiving terrain. The narrative tightens as she approaches a gas station, a skeletal relic of a bygone era. With her gun at the ready and every sense alert, she enters the eerie silent. The station, with its empty shelves and haunting emptiness, seems to hold its breath. As she rests, a fleeting moment of reflection is shattered by ominous thuds and the sinister hiss of an unseen creature lurking just out of sight. The tension is palpable as Julia makes her hasty retreat. Her conversation with Harry, crackling through the static, adds layers of desperation and urgency. They're not just surviving, they're clinging to the fringes of hope. With 39 souls relying on her, every decision Julia makes is laced with the weight of their collective fate. The mention of a shortcut and the impending cloak of nightfall dangle the promise of danger just on the horizon. As the bleak horizon stretches before her, Juliet stumbles upon an anomaly in the wasteland, an RV, a silent sentinel in the midst of desolation. With the cold grip of her gun and the echo of her own footsteps as her only companions, she approaches, her eyes catching the ominous glint of fresh blood. The air is thick with the tension of unspoken threats as labored breaths punctuate the silence. Inside this grim tableau, Juliet encounters a man, his life ebbing away amidst a pool of his own blood. Their exchange is a dance of desperation and survival, a heated confrontation where every word is a dagger drawn. The man, plagued by his impending doom, reveals a horrific secret. A creature, a reaper, is trapped within the RV, a lurking nightmare amidst the promise of canned goods and salvation. The man's plea for a merciful end hangs in the air, a stark testament to the bleakness that has consumed their world. But Juliet, her heart armored against pity, refuses to grant his wish. Her words are a cold comfort, offering him a choice between a swift end or a chance at life, however uncertain. With resolve stealing her every move, Juliet confronts the beast, her battle a cacophony of gunshots and primal roars. The RV becomes an arena of life and death, shaking on its foundations as the struggle within reaches its crescendo. And when the silence falls, it's Juliet who emerges, a lone victor in a world that knows no mercy. She finds the old man, now a lifeless husk, a final witness to the ruthlessness required to survive. Juliet takes from him what she can, the canned goods a meager trophy for the horrors endured. The road calls her back, a path leading ever onward through the shattered remnants of civilization. A fleeting moment of vulnerability surfaces as Juliet clutches a photo, a memento of a life long lost. But fate is cruel, and as the wind claims her precious memory, a moment's distraction leads to catastrophe. The world spins wildly, and then darkness claims her. In the stillness of unconsciousness, we are whisked away to a time before the fall, to a moment of innocence and ignorance. Juliet, in a quiet art gallery, is a stark contrast to the warrior we've come to know. The thunderous symphony of the storm outside is a distant echo compared to the storm that is to come. In this serene past, her interaction with Jack, lighthearted and mundane, is a reminder of all that has been lost. The absurdity of their conversation, a brief respite from the relentless march of despair, underscores the tragedy of the world that awaits. In the gallery, a place where art whispers secrets of beauty and pain, Juliet's evasive dance with Jack unfolds. Her reluctance is a quiet storm, her laughter a momentary respite from the downpour outside. But the rain, insistent and unyielding, traps her within these walls of creativity and expression. Jack, with a persistence that echoes the relentless downpour, encourages her to see beyond the surface, to find beauty amidst the chaos. But as the past fades, the harsh reality of the present crashes down upon Julia. Her awakening is a symphony of agony, her body a testament to the brutality of her world. The cruel twist of metal and bone, the absence of her gun, and the encroaching night all conspire against her. In a display of human resilience and ingenuity, she reaches for her only lifeline, her pistol, only to be thwarted by fate once more. Back in the past, we see Juliet's cautious dance with Jack continue beyond the gallery's confine. Their conversation, a blend of humor and sincerity, reveals layers of their character. Jack's world, rich in art and culture, contrasts starkly with Juliet's reality, marred by familial estrangement and unspoken burden. Yet, in this moment, they find a common ground, a fleeting connection amidst the chaos of their respective lives. In the present, Juliet's struggle for survival is a visceral portrayal of the human spirit. Her actions, driven by sheer will and survival instinct, are a stark contrast to the vulnerability and humor of her past. The juxtaposition of her current agony against the backdrop of her former life paints a picture of what has been lost to the apocalypse. The flashback to the lavish bar, where Jack's fascination with Juliet deepens, unravels layers of her life she keeps hidden. Their gazes, 
one filled with longing and the other with indifference, speak volumes of their complex dynamic. Juliet's world, it seems, is one of constant survival, not just against the apocalyptic horrors but also against the demons of her own making. As Juliet navigates the treacherous path of her dual existence, the encounter with Jack at her apartment reveals the depths of her despair and struggle. Her living conditions, the stark reality of her dealings, and her fierce independence paint a picture of a woman who has been fighting battles long before the world fell apart. Jack's attempt to penetrate the walls she has built around herself is met with resistance and pain, a testament to the complexity of human connections in a world that has forgotten what it means to be human. In this tale of survival, past and present intertwine, each shedding light on the other, revealing the multifaceted nature of our struggle for survival, for meaning, and for connection in a world that seems determined to tear itself apart. In the present's relentless embrace, Juliet's ordeal continues, a relentless testament to her will to survive. With hands that have known both the gentle touch of art and the harsh grip of survival, she binds her wound, a grim yet necessary ritual in her solitary fight for life. Her attempt to reach out to Harry, a beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness, is met with silence, a void that amplifies her frustration and isolation. Her shout, a cathartic release of her pent-up fears and frustrations, becomes a beacon for danger. The Reaper, a lurking embodiment of the world's relentless cruelty, is drawn to her cry. In a desperate bid for survival, Juliet abandons the precarious shelter of her overturned vehicle, her movements a painful yet determined crawl towards her only lifeline, her gun. The tense silence that follows is a tightrope walk between life and death. Juliet's breaths are shallow, her focus razor sharp, as she prepares to confront her would-be assailant. But fate, it seems, has other plans. Harry's call, a lifeline in the darkness, becomes a potential death knell. With quick thinking, Juliet sacrifices her only link to the outside world, casting the radio away to mislead the looming threat. The Reaper, a creature of instinct and hunger, is momentarily distracted, its attention stolen by the call of its kind. Juliet, holding her breath, watches as the creature, a nightmare made flesh, retreats into the darkness. Her relief is palpable, a momentary respite in a world where every breath could be her last. Now alone, with only the stars as her silent witnesses, Juliet reloads her gun, each bullet a symbol of her unwavering resolve. We revisit a past where Juliet, battered and bruised, finds an unlikely sanctuary. Jack, with a tenderness that belies his understanding of her unspoken pains, tends to her wounds without a word, offering solace without the need for explanation. His silent ministrations speak volume, providing a temporary respite from the relentless storm of her life. As the new day dawns, breakfast becomes a quiet battleground of emotions and unspoken truth. Juliet, unable to stomach more than just the food before her, is caught in Jack's attempt to pierce the veil of her silence with humor and gentle probing. His revelation of his own past struggles and losses is an olive branch, an attempt to show her that adaptation and survival are possible, even in the face of overwhelming despair. Juliet's request for a walk, a seemingly simple desire for fresh air, is a coded plea for escape, a return to the demons that Jack is all too aware of. His refusal, firm and unwavering, marks a turning point. The elevator's unresponsiveness becomes a metaphor for Juliet's own trapped situation, physically within the apartment and emotionally within her own turmoil. Her rage, a tempest of frustration and desperation, crashes against Jack's calm resolve. The destruction she unleashes is a physical manifestation of her inner chaos, a cry for help that she herself might not fully understand. And yet, Jack remains unshaken, his embrace a lighthouse in her stormy sea, offering not just physical restraint but an emotional anchor. The kiss, an unexpected convergence of their shared pain and understanding, marks a moment of vulnerability and connection. It's a silent acknowledgement of their shared humanity, of the need for comfort and understanding in a world that often offers neither. In the desolate night of the present apocalyptic world, Juliet's survival instinct is a flickering flame in the pervasive darkness. She casts glow sticks into the abyss, a strategic ploy to reveal any lurking reaper. Her every move is a calculated risk, a delicate balance between silence and action. When the eerie stillness is broken by a sinister sound, Juliet's response is swift and decisive, her movements a dance of survival against the nightmarish reaper perched atop her car. The confrontation is a visceral struggle, a clash between human determination and monstrous ferocity. As the reaper yanks at the window, its grotesque form a harbinger of death, Juliet's response is pure instinct. The roar of the engine, the screech of tires against the desolate ground, and the pain inflicted on the creature are her desperate bid for life. Even as she fires into the darkness, her heart races with the realization that the Reaper is far closer than she thought, its presence a chilling whisper behind her. The final confrontation leaves Juliet shaken to her core. The echoes of her gunshots fade into the night, leaving behind a silence that is almost suffocating. Her attempts to fix the radio, her trembling hands, and the empty flask of alcohol are the physical manifestations of her internal turmoil. The realization of her utter solitude and vulnerability in this vast, hostile world is a heavy weight upon her soul. Meanwhile, the flashback to a past filled with tentative hope and deep-seated fears offers a stark contrast. Moving into a new house with Jack, 
Juliet's joy is tempered by her apprehensions, the ghosts of her past a constant whisper in her mind. Jack's gentle touch and words of comfort are beacons of light in her darkness, his unwavering belief in their future together a testament to the strength of their bond. The revelation of their future child's room is a moment of profound vulnerability for Juliet. Her doubts about motherhood, her fear of passing on her traumas, are the silent battles she fights within herself. Jack's understanding and patience are the threads that hold them together, his love an anchor in her stormy sea. The tragic turn of their story, the loss of their stillborn child, is a reminder of the fragility of happiness in their lives. The empty nursery room stands as a monument to their grief, a shared pain that both unites and isolates. As they navigate this heartbreak, the complexities of their relationship, the depth of their love, and the shadows of their individual struggles are laid bare, a tapestry of human emotion and resilience. Back in the stark and unforgiving world of her present reality, Juliet's battle for survival rages on. With her radio finally functional, she reaches out into the void, hoping for a lifeline from Harry. Their conversation, marred by static and misunderstanding, is a desperate grasp at connection, a beacon of hope in her relentless night. The locator beacon, her new lifeline, becomes a focus of her determination, a task to keep the shadows at bay. As she works to secure her sanctuary against the nightmarish reaper lurking outside, her situation teeters on a knife edge. The creature's relentless assault is a terrifying symphony of survival and desperation. Juliet's resourcefulness in the face of such relentless terror, using light, barricades, and sheer willpower, is a testament to her unwavering spirit. The call from Harry, a fleeting moment of human connection, brings a glimmer of hope, a strategy to repel the darkness. But the broken flashlight is a cruel twist of fate, leaving Juliet once again to rely on her wits and courage. The headlights, her last bastion of defense, hold the Reaper at bay, a temporary victory in her ongoing war. The promise of rescue at sunrise is a distant hope, a flicker on the horizon. Juliet's call to Harry, once the Reaper is driven off, is a mix of relief and desperation, the need for reassurance, for salvation, palpable in her voice. In the past, Juliet's tumultuous relationship with Jack unfolds, a complex tapestry of love, pain, and misunderstanding. Their confrontation is a raw exposition of their deepest wounds and fears. Juliet's hysterical accusations and Jack's restrained frustration paint a picture of two people torn apart by tragedy and unspoken blame. The loss of their child is a chasm between them, filled with grief, guilt, and recrimination. Jack's departure, a physical manifestation of their emotional distance, leaves Juliet isolated in her pain, her anger a shield against her own crushing guilt. The news of the subway attack, the realization that Jack is hurt, is a jarring intrusion of reality, a cruel reminder of the fragile threads that bind them. Juliet's rush to find out about Jack, the urgency and fear that propel her, are a stark contrast to the stoic survivor of the apocalyptic world. In the present's relentless grasp, Juliet's existence teeters on the edge of a knife, each moment a battle against the all-consuming darkness. The sudden appearance of a bike and its rider offers a fleeting hope, a potential rescue from her nightmarish ordeal. But this hope is quickly dashed as the man's true, cannibalistic nature is revealed. In this brutal world, trust is a luxury few can afford, and Juliet's situation grows ever more desperate. The Reaper's unexpected intervention is a grim twist of fate, its savage attack on the cannibal a stark reminder of the merciless world in which Juliet survived. As she witnesses the horror unfold, the reality of her situation sinks in, the weight of her isolation and despair pressing down upon her. The contemplation of ending her own life is a testament to the unbearable burden she carries, the gun under her chin a symbol of her utter desperation. Yet, at the precipice of surrender, a memory of Jack pierces the darkness. The image of him, wounded and voiceless in the hospital, is a reminder of their shared humanity, their pain, and their love. His silent message of love and encouragement through the whiteboard is a lifeline, pulling her back from the brink. It's a powerful testament to the enduring strength of human connection, a reminder that even in the darkest moments, there are reasons to keep fighting. Emboldened by this memory, Juliet's survival instinct reignites. Her plan is daring and desperate, a gambit that pits her directly against the Reaper. The use of the flare and gasoline is a calculated risk, a strategy born of her indomitable will to live. As the creature survives the explosion and continues its relentless pursuit, Juliet's situation grows increasingly perilous. The Reaper's grasp is unyielding, its intentions clear. Juliet's struggle is visceral and raw, every movement a fight for life itself. The car, once a shelter, becomes a trap as the creature seeks to pull her into the darkness. Her screams, her pain, and her determination are the embodiment of her struggle to survive. In the final confrontation, Juliet's resolve never wavered. With the Reaper looming over her, she manages to reclaim her gun, her last defense against the night. The shots she fires are more than just bullets. They are her defiance, her refusal to be consumed by the darkness. And when the creature falls, her tears are not just of relief but of a profound understanding of the cost of survival in this cruel world. Juliet's journey is more than a fight for survival. It's a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of overwhelming despair. Under the vast expanse of the starlit sky, Juliet's world is a tapestry woven with threads of loss, love, and the relentless pursuit of survival. The bitter memory of Jack's passing, a wound that time has failed to heal, engulfs her. In the hospital, 
As she stood by his side, the realization of her loss was a crushing weight, a stark reminder of the fragility of human connections in a world so easily torn apart. As Dawn's first light begins to pierce the darkness, the Reaper's sudden movement signals a turn in Juliet's fate. With no bullets left and her strength waning, her confrontation with the creature is no longer a fight but an acceptance of her seemingly inevitable end. The creature's unexpected touch, gentle and trembling, is a moment of profound realization. The impossible thought that the Reaper could be Jack, the one person who saw her worth and loved her unconditionally shakes the very foundation of her reality. The flashback to their first meeting in the art gallery, a time of innocence and possibility, stands in stark contrast to the brutal world Juliet now inhabit. Jack's belief in fate, in the universe's mysterious ways of bringing people together, echoes in her mind. His promise to close the gallery and walk her home, a simple yet profound gesture, is a testament to the depth of his commitment, a challenge to the skepticism that has long colored Juliet's view of the world. In the present, as she embraces the creature she believes to be Jack, Juliet's tears are a river of mixed emotions, grief, love, and the overwhelming relief of reunion. Her confession of love, a long overdue acknowledgement of their deep bond, is a moment of clarity in the chaos that surrounds them. The gun, once a symbol of her fight for survival, now takes on a new meaning. With Jack by her side, even in this monstrous form, Juliet is determined not to let go. If they cannot be together in life, then they will find solace in the afterlife, a final stand against a world that has taken so much from them. As the story concludes, Juliet and Jack, united in their tragic fate, stand as a reminder of the enduring power of love and the human spirit's capacity for hope, even in the darkest of times. Their journey, a harrowing path through a world gone mad, is a testament to the idea that even when all is lost, the bonds that connect us can transcend the most unimaginable of circumstances.